For now, we're joined by Maurice Hirsch, head of legal strategies for Palestinian Media Watch. Uh, Maurice, thanks for being with us. We uh, have another guest hopefully joining us in a minute here. But Maurice, these alleged uh, Nablus right. summer camps, they stood out to me. I mean, this is the West Bank. This is the Palestinian Authority under the Palestinian Authority's watch. Is this actually happening from what you can tell? This is not only happening, it's happening all over Judea and Samaria, in every place that you can find where the Palestinian Authority is present. We at Palestinian Media Watch are also presenting a new report tomorrow showing how in Hebron, Fatah slash PA slash PLO uh, summer camps are doing exactly the same things. What they're doing, and this isn't new, it is wrong to say um, until now that it was only, only Hamas yeah. every year. The Palestinian Authority has summer camps in which they train and recruit new child terrorists. What's the atmosphere? How do you characterize the, more broadly here the atmosphere towards Israel these weeks, these recent weeks, let's say even just since President Biden's visit? What's the atmosphere in the Palestinian Authority controlled media, the news, in, just, in talking about Israel? Basically, what the Palestinian Authority has been doing for the last, uh, um, really for the last almost year and a half is trying to get to a situation where it can use and abuse the international community's soft uh, uh, approach and send into battle their children, send their children to die. That looks as, 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 as evil as that sounds. It just looks good in the international media. When children are sent to kill Israelis and Israelis dare defend themselves, then that looks good in the international media. And the Palestinian Authority at the moment is trying any which way it can to, def to deflect uh, and focus from their political situation. Mahmoud Abbas, the 86-year-old dictator, who's now in his 18th year of a four-year term as president. There are no pal there's no Palestinian parliament. Ah ah Mahmoud Abbas, in the last three and a half years, has done everything to destroy, obliterate, really, any hint that even remained of the idea of a Palestinian democracy and now the Palestinians are looking for any way to deflect criticism. And that they always find in the common, in the two common themes. El Aqsa is in danger. That is the PA's call to war to the Palestinian people. And that is what they claim all the time. And their second move is to arm, recruit, and train the Palestinian children in order to fight their battle, because they know that the international community does not see. Uh, um, that those activities going on and that they can be ignored and that the person or the, the, the country vilified will be Israel when it defends it. Uh, Maurice, I'm bringing in uh, Samar Sinjalawi, joining us from Jerusalem right now, is a, a Fatah activist and the uh, chairman of the Jerusalem Development Fund. Samar, thanks for joining us again on the program here. I don't know how much you caught of uh, Maurice's response here. We started bringing up this uh, look at these uh, sort of summer camps for youth across the West Bank being supported by Fatah right now, these very militant camps here, worrying again about the prospects for any progress towards peaceful coexistence here. I want to put this out there as well. Prime Minister Lapid was just in Amman meeting with King Abdullah in Jordan now, and it comes out saying they were speaking about the Palestinians. Does there seem to be an opening for some sort of positive progress right now, Sam? Well, uh, first of all, let me tell you that uh, it is very important to notice that only a nonviolence strategy for Palestinians is the, 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 the best options. And, uh, and I think uh, most of the Palestinians are uh, uh, supporting more and more uh, the option of, of nonviolence. But we should take into consideration, and this is, this is as part of explanation uh, of why there is always some kinds of violent trend among the Palestinian society. It is simply because the occupation is very violent. The most violent organization that exists between the river of Jordan and the Mediterranean Sea is the Israeli army. The Israeli army, when, when it patrols the cities, uh, the Palestinian cities in, in, in Nablus or in Jenin or in Ramallah, and even Zone A that is totally under Palestinian uh, security and civil control. The army does not circulate uh, flowers. It is a very violent operation. Summer, I understand that, that violence is apparent in these Palestinian cities. You're right. The IDF is bringing conflict in there, but they're, it's reactive. They're coming after terrorist organizations. They're coming after militants who are planning attacks in, in Israel here now. So uh, 
Is that seen? Is that discussed in Palestinian society? If Fatah and, and the PLO were doing their job and the PA were doing their job fighting terrorism, then Israel wouldn't need to do that. The problem is that the PA, Mahmoud Abbas, Fatah that Sama represents, not only is involved actively in terrorism, but is the driving force behind terrorism. They have for months and for years been trying to say, well, we control the West Bank and not Hamas. They do indeed control the West Bank. And as we saw in the build up to the visit of President Biden, the level of violence went down. That is because Fatah controlled the level of violence. Fatah says when we want uh, terror attacks, how many terrorist attacks we want, and how many Israelis we want dead. Samir needs to deal with that, that Fatah controls that level of violence, not the Israeli uh, 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 Israel Defense Force, which responds to terrorism. Fatah is the driving force behind terrorism. I would like him to also present maybe some facts as to why he believes that the Palestinian society is going more towards peaceful a, a peaceful solution. That is not Let's the... Give, the Summer, uh, I want to give you a chance here to respond to this, by, please. By Summer, Khalid yes. Kaki. Yes. The source of all this violence, my friend, is the occupation, is the military occupation of five million Palestinians that have been continuously under aggressive military occupation. We are we are shot and killed like dogs in the streets, and nobody cares. Uh, you you have been speaking about the the meeting of of Lapid and King uh, Abdullah in Jordan, but. Nobody is including the Palestinian in any process, not in the Abraham Accords, not in a regional uh, political process. The Palestinians are left in the shadow, and the occupation is continuing. There is always to be fair, confiscation. Some of the Palestinians and, haven't exactly been knocking on the door saying, please include us at the table uh, in these discussions. The Palestinians, by and large, excluded themselves from any Abraham Accords talks, uh, including the region here. They've been shunning anything to do with normalizing Israel. But, but and what Palestinians is Samar talking about? The Palestinians in Gaza who aren't under occupation at all? Some, under please. Under the aggression yeah. of the military occupation, you cannot expect Palestinians to be Mother Teresa. The violence of the occupation uh, is is building up a violence of resi resistance. This is the equation. We need to end the occupation. Some, I we want to throw to another point out here. Uh, talk, we're talking about the presence of the IDF of the military right now. Recent reports, and some are going to something Maurice brought up here. I'm questioning how much control Fatah and, and those who seek peace and not war truly have control in the West Bank. Recent reports are highlighting, especially in northern West Bank cities, that the Islamic Jihad, Hamas, are ramping up their efforts to create areas where essentially PA security forces can't go, that make it harder for the IDF to go. Does the PA have control over those areas in the Northern West Bank? Well, the PA is weak, the PL is losing control, and this is because the project, the strategic choice of PA to go into negotiation with Israel and uh, Oslo agreement has failed in front of the street. Nobody yeah. has any kind of expectation out of it. Fair enough. And and let me tell you something. It's uh, uh, when the when the Israeli army invaded Jenin and killed Shirin Abu Akli. It was inside Area A, and Shirin Abu Akli was a, a that press is, representative. That is just a lie. You don't. You cannot provide any evidence to support the. The claim that you just made that Israel killed Shirin Abu Akhle. The official line of the PA. Abu Akhle was killed by, 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 by Fatah terrorists. So let, let, me, let me tell you something. Let me ask you one question. Uh, it is still the responsibility. If Shirin Abu Akhle was an Israeli journalist, it was in the same hour that the Israeli army would, would have identified its shooter. Because it's an Israeli still, journalist Israeli summer Israeli. would have been embedded on the Israeli side of the conflict, not the Palestinian side. Okay, Shireen was embedded with the Palestinian side of this fight. That's why Israel had really no access to her situation there. I'd just like to point that out here. She wasn't exactly standing with Israeli soldiers. She was 100 meters away from Shireen Abu Akhle. The only, the only military presence that was close to Shireen Abu Akhle was the Israeli yeah. army. Nothing else was happening there. The only military presence because the rest of them were, ter were Fatah terrorists, uh, uh, Samir. Maurice, let's, uh, let's get the... Yeah. yeah. Go ahead, uh, if you'll uh, respond here. Maurice, uh, I want you to respond. Uh, maybe stay away from Shireen. <laughs> why, why everybody, why everybody I, I, is talking I, I, about Palestinian terrorists, my friend, and nobody is talking about the Israeli settlement terrorists, the Hilltops youth who are causing daily uh, terrorists. There, last month, there was 431 terrorist attacks against Palestinians by settlers, by Jewish settlers. And in and the first six talking. months of, of 2020, there were 1,138 Palestinian terrorist attacks against Israelis, not including stone throwing and Molotov cocktails, which is an event of thousands and thousands more 
every single day. It is unbelievable that you would even think about bringing in statistics when you do not know the facts. I'm questioning your desire for peace here uh, as well. I mean, that's what led me into this discussion, Samaras. Which side is appearing to be conditioning the ground or at least seeking uh, a, a peaceful coexistence right now? We're not seeing those signs coming out of the West Bank as openly as we'd like. Well, let's stop this blame, this mutual blaming, and let's start uh, trying to end this seriously because I think that continuing to convince yourself that the Palestinian-Israeli issue is only a security issue is misleading. You are betraying your people. You are misleading yourself. It's not security issue. It's political. And you need to have leadership in the coming elections that is capable to start negotiations and end this uh, this kind of, of conflict. Have it to an end. Because Israel, we, if not, we there's have, nothing Israel using, can do about the fact that, using, that the Palestinian Authority using, pays 850 using, million shekel every year to support terrorists. Well, for, forget about this. You know that it's not an issue. Oh, let's you forget about out. a billion shekel a year going to incentivize terrorism. Are you really joking? Are you really joking about taking little children and training them and supporting them to be terrorists? How can you say that it's a peace-loving people? This current government has released all this money. To, to, to the PA recently. It means it's not a security issue. It, it's not an issue. It's it's just a political bubble that has been created by the Hasbaristas, by the propagandists in, 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 in Israel, trying to show the Palestinians yes, as uh, the sense of devils. We, we are a normal people, my friend. And we are we really yes, are seeking... For Every normal person pays terrorists to murder Jews. Every normal person trains their youth en masse to, uh, to carry out terrorist attacks. Every normal group of people, of course. I condemn, I condemn the all the we see it all over I, I the world. Condemn. People incentivizing people to murder Jews. Look, I have to break I, in, gentlemen. I have to break I, in. We, we have one minute left. Samar, Maurice, I feel one thing, in, in a, a common thread. Uh, Samar, I'll give you 10 seconds. you got to wrap up. We're out of time here. Tell us, please. Okay. I, I have the courage to condemn any killing of any Palestinian, of any Israeli civilian. Can you condemn the continuous killing of Palestinian kids by the Israeli army? 67 kids were buried under the ground in Gaza last year, and nobody Summer, is no, condemning No one in Israel wants to see kids killed on any side of this conflict. I'll speak for that. But I think what's apparent from both of you, and I appreciate you coming in, is we all want we all want to see peace here. We all want to see the end of conflict here. We do hope as well, Summer, that a new Israeli government will come in and bring up at least uh, the optimism around that subject. Summer, Sinjalawi, Maurice Hirsch.